Good morning, Anne. Good morning, Your Grace. Who will you ride with? On my own, Your Grace. On your own? There's a new saddle now which allows this. But with no man to hold on to, how do you propose to stay on the horse? As you do, Your Grace. With my thighs. Away! The historical drama, The Other Boleyn Girl, tells us the inside story of the intense sibling rivalry between the two Boleyn sisters. Now, Queen Anne is played by Natalie Portman, who, of course, has some previous Queen experience, even if it was from a galaxy far, far away. Now, her sister Mary is played by the delightful Scarlett Johansson, who, in this film, is so deglamorized she looks almost average. Please, speak to Father. Do something. I don't want to go. This is not a request. We have been summoned. Please don't be angry with me. You think I desire to go for this purpose? All I know is the man that didn't know who you were I was with you in that room for half an hour and came out besotted. I don't know what you said or did. Nothing, sister, except sing your praises and talk about my husband. Really? Well, you must show me how you did that sometime. Uh, King Henry VIII is played by Australian actor Eric Bana, who has this uh, peculiar quality of sort of uh, melting into the wainscot every time he's in a scene with any other actor. Your sister is gone as you wished. Would you give yourself to me now? No, when you are loyal to me above all others. But I am. No, you are loyal to the queen above all others. I barely see Catherine. But she sits on a throne beside you. Your right hand in matters of state. For appearance's sake only. Still, she is your queen. Well, you probably know the story by now. King Henry VIII is uh, so warm for Anne Boleyn's form that he's willing to divorce his queen. However, to do that, he's got to drop out of the Roman Catholic Church, an event that, of course, changes the course of British history. Queen Anne reigns for a scant 1,000 days before the king has her beheaded on charges of extramarital connubulating. Well, now the other Boleyn girl feels like masterpiece theater trying to make a good movie out of a trashy pulp novel. I mean, come on, it comes equipped with all kinds of salacious sordid stuff. It includes beheadings, it includes illicit adulterous affairs, bastard children, rape, and even a suggestion of incest. You know, if done properly, this film could have rivaled some of the most visceral works of Shakespeare, but not to happen here. You will be sent to France and stay there until you've learned your lesson. What? No! Father, please! How can you have done this? You knew full well Mary's friendship with the king is at an extremely delicate stage. Any scandal, any mark upon her name could be fatal. You told them, didn't you? It was for your own good. <sighs> and you never would have got away with it. It would have ruined your prospects forever. Really? For my good? Well, I'll try to remind myself of that while I'm in exile. And you're here in the king's bed. Not challenged for our father's affection. That it was for my good, and not yours. <laughs> the other Boleyn girl lacks the depth and the scope of the major historical drama epic that it clearly intends to be. Now, the American actors and the Australian actor do marvelous things with their British accents. The sets are quite compelling, very visual, very authentic. But what we have here is a movie all about raw passion and power, curiously lacking both. For the Daily Herald on the web, dailyherald.com, I'm Dan Geyer.